In this video, we are talking about how you can make Photon synchronize different objects between all online players. My name is Oliver Eberlei and you are watching the Sky Arena Photon Tutorial. Photon is really great at boiling down one of the hardest problems for real-time games to a very manageable level. There are lots of interesting topics about networking that are worth checking out, but to start creating your multiplayer game, you don't need to have a lot of prior knowledge about networks, latency or prediction. You will come across these issues soon enough, but Photon allows you to start now regardless. To give you a little bit of background knowledge, Photon is using a client-server architecture with one client, the master client, acting as the ruling overlord of the session. What this means is that instead of talking to each other, all players are actually connecting to a server and the server then relays all information gets to all other players playing the same game in the same room. We are going to talk about rooms in a future episode, but for now, what's important is that your clients are sending data to the server and receiving data from the server about all other players. We start a little bit further along into the development process to show you how players can start communicating with each other. If you don't know how to set up or connect to a Photon server, you should check out the demos that come with the Photon Unity networking package from the Unity Asset Store and the documentations on exitgames.com. Photon View is the most important component we are going to use. It is used to send data between all players. Each object that has to be synchronized gets its own Photon View. Photon then assigns each Photon View a unique ID, so it can keep track of all the different objects. There are only a few properties you have to deal with here. First is Observe. You can assign any component to Observe, which is then used to communicate with the server. You will need to define the function view in this component, which is called by the Photon View each time the network is synchronized. You can control how often this happens by setting Photon Network Send Rate and Photon Network Send Rate on Serialize. The default values of 20 times and 10 times per second respectively are fine for our purposes right now, but this strongly depends on the game you are creating. Just remember that the higher these numbers are, the more data you are sending over the network. So it's always a trade-off you have to balance for your specific game. You can also set the Unity components transform or rigid body to be observed. Photon then gives you additional options if you want to synchronize position and or rotation in case of a transform or if you want to synchronize linear and or angular velocity in case of a rigid body. This is a nice shortcut for simpler situations where you only need to have these values synchronized. We are going to look at the onPhoton serialized view function in a second, but first let's talk about the second property you get with each photon view, observe option. As a general rule, it's always better to send as little data as possible. Observe option gives you several different modes to control how the data from onPhoton serialized view is sent through the pipes. The first one is off. With this option, onPhoton serialized view isn't called at all. This is sometimes useful if you don't need to synchronize the state multiple times a second, but only on certain events. Remote procedure call is the keyword here, and we are going to talk about them in the next video. The next option is reliable data compressed. The option guarantees that the data you send will arrive in the correct order. This is done by sending confirmation packages back and forth between the clients and the server, which of course means that more data is sent. The delta compressed part means that only the differences between one state and the next are sent. So if the state doesn't change at all, no data is sent. For Photon to be able to apply this compression, it is necessary that you send the exact same number of variables each frame. Skipping updates because there was no change at all is handled by Photon automatically. The unreliable mode allows for packages to be lost. This is useful if the next package isn't that far along anyway. For example, if you send position updates every frame. Since you are sending the updates several times per second, it's not a big issue if a few updates are lost. Also, if a single package takes longer to arrive, it doesn't clog up the pipes because the server is waiting for it. It simply gets discarded if you knew a package has arrived earlier. Unreliable on change is basically the same as unreliable. The only difference is that if the data hasn't changed from one update to the next, one last reliable package is sent to make sure that everybody got the last update and then nothing is sent until the data changes again. This makes sense for objects that sometimes send a lot of data and other times send nothing at all. Each of these options is useful in a different scenario and you have to consider your own specific situation when you choose one option over the other. Again, the rule is, if you can get away with sending less data, then you should send less. Now that you've decided how to send the data, it's time to actually send it. This is where on Photon Serialized View comes into the picture. Just as a reminder, 
Photon view calls the unphoton serialized view method in the component you have assigned to the observe property, so make sure that you define it in the correct script. In order for photon view to find on photon serialized view, it has to follow a very specific naming convention as seen here. The method returns no parameter. It is called on photon serialized view with the capital O, P, S, and V. And finally, it expects two parameters of type photon stream and photon message info. The first parameter of type photon stream is a container used to either provide incoming data or for you to provide outgoing data. It has the isWriting property, so you know whether to read or to write the data. You can use the sendNext or serialize method synonymously to write your data to the photon stream and the receiveNext function to read the data from the stream. On photon serialize view usually looks something like this. You first check whether you are sending or receiving data and then you proceed to do so. The second parameter of on photon serialized view is of type photon message info. This container is used throughout photon to give information about when a package arrived and which player sent it initially. Now that we understand how the photon part of it all works, let's dig into the source code of our demo to see how it's implemented. For this, we are looking at the ship game object. Every player creates one of these objects for themselves, which are then synchronized between all players. To create a synchronized game object, you have to use Photon's own instantiate method instead of the one Unity provides. It looks roughly the same as Unity's instantiate method, with a few important differences. First of all, instead of a game object, the Photon Network Instantiate method expects a string. This is the name of the prefab you want to create, and the prefab has to be located in a resources folder. Since all clients will have the prefab in their resources folder, Photon can use the string to tell everybody which prefab has to be instantiated. Parameters 2 and 3 are the initial position and rotation of the new objects, just as you would expect. But there are two more parameters. The group parameter defines which group the created photon view is in. Photon lets you control if updates from specific groups are sent or received through the methods Photon Network Set Sending Enabled and Photon Network Set Receiving Enabled. Depending on your game, this can be useful to prevent updates from and to specific objects. For the last parameter, an array of objects is expected, which will be set as the photon view's instantiation data. Each client will have access to this data through the respective photon view. This is useful to send data about the object that you only have to send once. In the case of our demo, we are sending which team the ship belongs to, blue or red. This concludes the first part about on serialized view. In the next video, we are going to talk about how we actually implemented it in the demo.